Thanks for joining us today. This is our first installment of Golster TV. I'm joined here today with Rick Davis, the Senior Meteorologist of NOAA. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tommy. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the tropics and mainly what we're going to be dealing with here in our region opposed to maybe what's going on elsewhere in the world. So I'm going to let Rick take this away right now. Yeah, so as uh, we all know, we had uh, Tropical Storm Bill just earlier this week moving to Texas. Uh, really didn't give us a whole lot of surf from that. Um, yeah, it's pretty disappointing, but uh, looking off for the next week to, to week and a half, it's looking really, uh, really bad for surf for us. Uh, the tropics are really quiet, hardly a cloud between Africa and uh, the Caribbean. There's a couple waves out there, but uh, those tropical waves don't have a lot of convection with them. And anything that does try to form uh, would move into Central America, wouldn't really move up here and, and give us any beneficial waves. And what do you think right now, other than I think we all know this is kind of the time of the year that it gets a little quiet, what, what's causing this lack of activity we should be having? So we have a couple things that are, that are kind of playing uh, with us, that, that are combining to, you know, we have El Nino, so we have an El Nino advisory in effect which means there's a moderate, a light El Nino now, uh, and that week El Nino is expected to become a moderate El Nino by the winter, so, uh, but is what that El Nino is doing is it bring, it's bringing hostile winds uh, up aloft, so any systems that try to form, they're getting sheared off. The other problem we've been having is the Saharan dust. We, we've had a large area uh, of Saharan dust that have moved across the equatorial Atlantic, uh, and that's what's really uh, suppressing a lot of the activity. So we have a combination of those two things. Uh, usually June is, is, is uh, fairly active for us. Um, and that's why we did see bill form in, in June. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico usually gets a little spike in June, uh, but that may be it for us. And uh, you know, coming weeks and into July, it's usually pretty quiet in the Gulf. So looking at the, the map today, it looks pretty void of clouds. Why don't we go in and uh, take an in-depth look at uh, some satellite views and some other uh, perspectives from Rick. Yeah, let's take a look. Here with Rick, and uh, he's going to give us a little more in-depth uh, discussion about the satellite picture we're currently looking at here on the screen. So take it away, Rick. Yeah, so this is this afternoon's tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, and as we mentioned before, there's literally no clouds across the tropical Atlantic. The uh, intertropical convergence zone uh, is, is located extremely far south for this time of year. So as we mentioned, anything, any little waves that were to get going would either hit into uh, South America or there is a wave here in the Caribbean that's going to move uh, into uh, uh, Central America. So even if anything were to form, uh, it would move off and, and be way far south of us. Uh, the stuff we see in the North Atlantic is a, is a low, system, low pressure system up there. Um, and as you guys have noticed, um, so last year the National Hurricane Center started issuing their five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Uh, it's a new product that uh, we're putting out to let people know of areas that may be developing and if they were to develop, uh, what kind of broad general path might they follow. So uh, there's percentages, low percentage, high percentage of, of uh, development. And a good thing to do is not only just look at the pictures, but read the discussions, which are located um, uh, down here. And they'll let you know, uh, like with Bill early on, when Bill was uh, in moving into the, the uh, Yucatan Peninsula, and even when it was in the Bay of Campeche, they talked about, you know, it might develop in a few days, but the winds are hostile, so don't, you know, don't get too excited. And as uh, surfers here, we want to, we see everything, and we want to wish cast it to be a, a wave maker, but realistically, um, tropical systems, a lot of things have to come together to make them strong and to, to move in our area. So we kind of have to have some luck and, and Bill didn't get its act together until it almost moved into Texas. Remnants of Bill are actually up in the mid-Mississippi River Valley right now. So as far as this, you know, let's just say the next couple weeks, w w as we move farther past some of this, you know, and, and we look into other areas of the tropics, what do you see as we move into July? Yeah, so uh, what we see right here, this is our average number of uh, storms here through history. So this is uh, well over 100 years worth of storms. And what we're just coming out of, this little uh, red increase here, that's uh, mainly tropical storm activity. And so what we're seeing, this is June, uh, but then once we get past this June 20th, which is uh, coming up, 
in kind of a you know stagnant pattern with not a lot of hurricanes um, and then it's not till August till we really see a peak and what we saw in June um, especially what we've seen historically in our area is that the development areas are blue so these are what's likely um, green is more likely so what ex perfect example was Bill uh, it didn't really get its act together over the, the Caribbean, but when it moved in the Gulf of Mexico and it moved into Texas. Um, we don't see much in the way of any activity currently in uh, the Caribbean, but that would be a favorable area for storms to develop, maybe strengthen in the eastern Gulf and come ashore. And that's because of a combination of uh, some late season cold fronts that may sag into the deep south and the steering currents. But like we just mentioned, we're, the Atlantic is void of anything going on right now. So then when we look into July, not looking too good for us because uh, there's not a lot of activity in July that we mentioned. And, uh, you know, it's not nearly as likely as June to get something into the, uh, the Atlantic, or from the Atlantic into the Gulf of Mexico. And because the steering current doesn't hook it as much, and that's because the cold fronts that in June may have been down here over the deep south are now up here over the Great Lakes. So that allows anything that d does develop to maybe push a little more to the west. So July is not looking too good. The end of June, uh, the, the models aren't showing a whole lot. And July, climatologically, is probably our flattest month uh, for surf around here. So with everything you just, you, know, you just spoke of, does it look like July is a good month for you know, people in Florida in general to grab that plane ticket and you know, head to another area? Yeah, that's probably the best chance uh, of you know, getting out of Florida taking a trip down in the Caribbean or, or Central America, that's a much better chance of getting surfed down there um, than it is here on the Gulf Coast. Rick's been a, a great friend of mine for uh, quite a while now, and I've been uh, fortunate enough to been shaping his boards for, uh, for the same amount of time. And he's going to actually take us into the weather room here, I'm going to say in a couple weeks when maybe things heat up a little more and give us a little more in-depth discussion about what maybe we can you know see in – you know, the late July, maybe early August when, you know, things maybe heat up and we have something to talk about. And I'd also like to talk about maybe some, you know, some past patterns that seem like when I was younger, it just seemed a little more active. And I think, you know, Rick is going to be able to bring, a, you know, some enlightenment to uh, maybe some of our older surfers that realize, hey, we had surf a lot more when we were younger. W what's going on nowadays? So... Yeah, there's actually a lot of a, a good statistical information out there that does support that we did have a lot more surf and a lot more weather activity, you know, 20 years ago than we do now. And uh, as Tommy said, uh, you know, we'll be coming to you from uh, the Weather Service office up in Ruskin next time we talk. I want to thank Rick uh, very much for taking time out of his day today and uh, give us a little, uh, you know, explanation because I know there's a lot of information out there on the internet and it's. You know, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, a lot of people have a lot of opinions, but this guy sitting next to me right now, he's the man. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Golf Street TV. Until next time, I'm Tommy Daniels, and this was Rick Davis, Senior Meteorologist. Noah, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, Tommy.